Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Welcome to this third Sunday of Easter. And on the third Sunday of Easter, we hear about the story of the apostles on the way to Emmaus. They recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. We as Catholics do the same, and sadly, in the midst of this um, coronavirus scare, we oftentimes have to recognize him from a distance. But this is temporary. We shall be together again. So in the meantime, as we prepare, either here or at home, to celebrate the mysteries of our faith, let us take a moment to open our minds and hearts to the understanding of the scriptures, as did the early disciples, as we call to mind our sins. A 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with many deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourself know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the thralls of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad, and my tongue has exalted, my flesh too will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne. He foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as God him, if you invoke his Father, him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during this time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your fertile conduct handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Him, 
but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found, gathered together, the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has been truly raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. There is a Christian songwriter and musician by the name of Michael Card. I don't know if he does much these days, but in his day he was very well known. And Michael Carr wrote and sang a song entitled, In His Distressing Disguise. In His Distressing Disguise. And I quote from that song, He is in the pain, he is in the need, he is in the poor we are told to feed. Though he was rich, for us he became poor. How could he give so much? What was it for? In his distressing disguise, he waits for us to surmise that we rob our brothers by all that we own, and that's not the way he has shown. He goes on to say, and to sing, Every time a faithful servant serves, a brother that's in need, what happens at that moment is a miracle indeed. As they look to one another, in an instant it is clear, only Jesus is visible, and they both disappear. In his distressing disguise, he hopes that we'll all realize that when we take care of the poorest of them, we've really done it to him. I'm sure that song, Distressing Disguise, comes from St. Matthew's Gospel with the final judgment saying, that is when we feed the poor, clothe the naked, give thirsty to the drink, and visit the ill, we actually do it for Jesus. And sometimes, like that song says, Jesus is fairly well hidden. He's in a fairly distressing disguise. In all fairness to us, and perhaps in all fairness to the early church, that gospel passage has Jesus, you might say, in disguise. They didn't recognize him. Perhaps because their grief was so heavy and they were downcast and they couldn't see beyond their own sadness and disappointment. But notice what Jesus did. He did with them what he does with us. He walked with them. Even in the midst of their pain and difficulty and grief, Jesus was there. And then he began to, so to speak, crack open the scriptures for them. And they began to see where these scriptures related to Jesus. But then, by the time they show hospitality, and Jesus joins them for, for dinner, he breaks open the bread. And they recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Isn't that what we do as Christians, as, and certainly as Roman Catholics? Which makes this coronavirus restrictive deal all the more difficult because we cannot gather as we're used to gathering. We recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread from home or online. Not the worst, not the best, not ideal, but it will have to do. We shall be together again. But whether we're here or at home or online, the Lord is present with us this evening or this morning or at home. He has gone nowhere and continues to walk with us. Notice some of the other scripture passages having to do with Easter Sunday. <clears throat> Mary Magdalene thought Jesus was the gardener in the garden. She didn't recognize him. Obviously, no one had risen from the dead before. It was only when he called her name that she recognized him. Jesus calls our name at baptism and each and every day of our lives. Hopefully our ears are open to hear, whether we're in church or whether we're at home, Jesus calls our name. Recall the story of that first Easter evening when the apostles were locked in the upper room 
and Jesus came to them. They thought they were seeing a ghost. They didn't recognize him until they touched him and until they broke bread with him. Isn't that the case with us as well? And one other scripture passage, some of the apostles went back to fishing not long after Easter, and Jesus comes to them on the shore, and they recognize him, in part because of the amount of fish that he helped them catch, and by the time they get to shore, they share a meal with him. Did you know that Jesus knew how to cook? He had the meal ready for them. All they needed was the fish. And once again, they come to recognize the Lord and the breaking of the bread. Again, it's a kind of a painful reminder for we who are Catholics. It's in our Christian and baptismal DNA to gather around this table and to break the bread and to break open the scriptures and to share that as a community. And the time will come, hopefully not too long from now, when we're able to do that. In the meantime, we recognize him in the Eucharist, but we're also called to recognize him in the people around us. And isn't that what Matthew's Gospel talks about? And isn't that what that distressing disguise song talks about? It's in precisely caring for and loving others that we come to care for and recognize Jesus. Here's a couple of examples. Talk about a distressing disguise. There's a lot of this going around, isn't there? And it's necessary, and it's safe, but as we look around and see others in these distressing disguises, or we ourselves have one, we know that we're being safe, that we're being proper, and that we're showing respect to other people. But make no mistake, my friends, whether we have the mask on or somebody else does, the Lord is within those people, even if we don't know them. If there has been anything that has been the great equalizer on the face of this earth and in this country and in this state, it's the coronavirus. We as human beings really cannot get away from it. Not that necessarily God sends it so that we can learn some things, but when it comes, we have the opportunity to recognize Jesus and others in some of the very least likely people. Also, the people down the street, it's kind of hard to recognize Jesus in them. Whether they have a dog that barks incessantly, whether they don't do their yard at all, let alone the way you and I think they should. The Lord is present in those people. Whether it's people that we work with, work for, work underneath, the Lord is present in those people. And the very people that we struggle with the most, and we put up blinders against, are the very people I believe, and I suspect, hopefully you believe, God has sent us to give us a little test. You say you believe, you go to church on Sunday, you'd be there if you could, let's see where the rubber hits the road when you deal with people that are a real pain in the you know where. Let's see how your Christian principles match up to your actions when someone cuts you off in traffic. Let's see how you do when people don't agree with you, vote like you do, and believe quite the way you do. Those are distressing disguises. Dorothy Day once said this, I really only love God as much as I love the person I love the least. Now, I really didn't want to mention that, and I don't like to hear it, because for me, it's very true, and that's distressing. So, even though I don't want to say it, let me say it again. <laughs> Dorothy Day says, I really only love God as much as I love the person I love the least. Isn't that where the rubber hits the road? And isn't that where the distressing disguise comes in? The Lord is in our midst, and hopefully, if anything, we take the Eucharist and the weekly gatherings less for granted than we ever had before. But until we get back together on a Saturday night or Sunday morning, we have a lot of work to do and a lot of opportunities to practice what we preach, to practice what we believe, to kind of put into practice the things we say we believe and do. 
And it's sometimes the very people that we find it hardest to be around that we find also are the people God has sent us. Sometimes they're in a fairly distressing disguise. And sometimes we live with them. And they're in our homes. Some people are not easy to live with. I live alone and it's not very easy. Not easy to stay by myself sometimes. I don't mind sheltering in place if I have a choice. But when I have to, I can think of all kinds of things I have to do and places I need to be. But once again, this opportunity, and it's not a punishment, it's an opportunity, an opportunity to see God and other people, the least likely people, and maybe to spend some time with somebody that we oftentimes run from, <laughs> ourselves. Ourselves. And to get in touch with that inner child that says, I am need God. And all these other things, while important, they might be taken away, but God continually walks with us in and through Jesus. He has always done that. He certainly did it on that Easter Sunday and does it here and does it now. Walks with us today, tomorrow, and you better believe it, every day. Shall we stand to profess our faith? Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we promise to serve God and to love one another as Jesus has loved us. And so now that our Lenten observance has been concluded and we continue to celebrate this Easter season, I ask you, do you renounce Satan? works. I do. And all his empty promises. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who raised his Son from the death, from death, give us new and everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now offer these prayers and petitions for people everywhere. For the pastors of the Catholic Church, especially our Pope and our Bishop, that they may continue to nourish us with God's words from the Scriptures, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our President, our Governor, and all elected officials, especially as they lead and govern during this time of COVID-19, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For first responders, doctors, nurses, and medical personnel, in thanksgiving for their service and for God's blessing and protection upon them, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who work in grocery stores, convenience stores, and all other places that we depend upon, especially at this critical time, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for teachers and all in the field of education, as they strive to reach and teach our young people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are lonely, frightened, questioning, unsure, and unsettled, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us here, whether here, present, or at home, may be grateful for the Eucharist as we long together once again
to recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread, we pray to the Lord. The Lord will hear our prayer for the faithful departed, that they may rise to the fullness of joy in God's presence. We pray to the Lord. The Lord will hear our prayer for prayers and petitions, hopes and dreams, concerns and longings that we now mention from the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, who raised your Son from the dead, Jesus our Savior, give us strength and courage to follow in his footsteps, to recognize him in the breaking of the bread and in the people around us. It is in his name that we offer these prayers, for Jesus is Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Yourself, 
so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we ought to celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with your Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May you make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is an honor to the temptation, but the Lord has forgiven Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, to you, our glory and glory and yours, now and forever. For Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. spirit.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, our angel, defend us in hell. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him and humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into God, Satan, and the Holy Spirit, and draw about the world the river of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass has ended. Amen. 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 Amen.